Okay, in this video we are going to talk about the dot product and the relationship to the angle between two vectors. So um, to do that we're going to need to be given two things. So we're going to be given a vector u which has components u1 and u2 and then a vector v that has components v1 and v2. And then there's a bunch of things that we either know or we need to know. Um, so I'm just going to list those out. So the first thing is we need to know that the dot product of u and v, so that's right, u dot v, is u1 v1 plus u2 v2. So you uh, multiply the first component, multiply the second component, and then you add those together. And we need to know the magnitude or norm of a vector is the square root of the first component squared plus the second component squared. Um, we need to know how to subtract vectors in component form, so uh, u minus v is going to be u1 minus v1 comma u2 minus v2 so you just subtract the first components and subtract the second components and then we also need to know the law of cosines so c squared is a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c which is the angle between a and b okay so we also need a picture so I'm going to draw a picture of u and v so here's a vector u Here's vector v, and uh, I want to like that's the start of a triangle. I want to close the triangle, and to close the triangle, um, I'm going to use another vector. So the way that I usually think about this is I have u, and then I'm going to create the vector negative v, which has the same magnitude as v, but is in the op exact opposite direction. So that's going to be negative v, and then if I pick up negative v and move it. Um, as long as I keep the direction and the magnitude the same, it's still negative v. So I'm going to move it up here, so this is also negative v. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from uh, the initial point of u, which is here, That's the I call that the initial initial point, to the terminal point of negative v, which I call the terminal terminal point. And then the vector uh, u plus negative v, which is the same as u minus v, goes from initial initial to terminal terminal so it goes like that so that's actually the vector u minus v but I can pick that up and move it as well so I'm going to pick that up and move it over here so it's same direction same magnitude therefore same vector um, so I have the vector u v and then to close off that triangle I have the vector u minus v okay so these are all the things that we need to know we only need part of this picture which is u v and u minus v so we're going to move to a new page and take a look at this. So here's our picture. I'm going to add a, an angle. So I'm going to call the angle theta, and that's going to be the angle between u and v. And then I want to turn this into a, a triangle I can work with. So right now it's definitely a triangle, um, but I want to kind of reduce it down to uh, just magnitudes. So I'm going to throw magnitudes around all these things. So now... This is something that I could definitely use the law of cosines on. So the law of cosines said um, c squared, which in this case will be the magnitude of u minus v, is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. So for a, I'm using the magnitude of u. For b, I'm using the magnitude of v. And then for uh, c, I'm using theta. So I'm just going to plug right in. So it's a squared plus b b squared and minus 2a times b times the cosine of c which is theta and that's going to equal c squared which is the magnitude of u minus v and then squared. Okay so um, we said we needed to know uh, the norm or the magnitude of a vector so we actually know all of these magnitudes and we have the magnitude of u is just the square root of u1 plus u1 squared plus u2 squared. Similarly for v, it's the square root of v1 squared plus v2 squared. And then also for u minus v, this is kind of the worst one to write. So it's the quantity u1 minus v1 squared plus the quantity u2 minus v2 squared. So we have all those, so we can actually make substitution. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to square at the same time so that I can kind of cut down on the steps. So um, the magnitude of u squared is um, u1 squared plus u2 squared. The magnitude of 
v squared is just v1 squared plus v2 squared. Since I know where I'm going, I'm not actually going to do anything to the next term. I'm just going to leave that as negative 2, magnitude of u, magnitude of v, cosine of theta. So that's going to actually save you some time. And then that's going to be equal to, I've got, a, I've got the magnitude, so I've got to square it, so it's going to be this. I'm not expanding that yet. Okay, so the left-hand side of this does not change, so I'm just going to copy it down. The right-hand side, I'm just going to do the algebra and expand it. So I get u1 squared minus 2u1 v1 plus v1 squared. And then plus, it's going to be u2 squared minus 2u2 v2 plus v2 squared. And now if you look at this, everything that is currently squared on both sides shows up on both sides. So we can actually cancel them. So the u1 squared cancel, the u2 squared cancel, v1 squared, v2 squared, and we're just left with this stuff. So negative 2, magnitude, magnitude, cosine of the angle, which is how most people say that, or a lot of people at least. And then we're left over here with negative 2 u1 v1 minus 2 u2 v2. And there's a negative 2 everywhere. So we'll cancel that. We're really close. We're almost done. So we've canceled our negative 2s, which leaves us with this. And then this, if you look at it, the right-hand side there, that's what we said the dot product was. So that's actually the dot product of u and v. So now we just have magnitude u, magnitude v, cosine theta is actually just equal to u dot v which is pretty exciting. Um, that's kind of the result we were looking for. Um, frequently you rearrange this and you write that the cosine of theta, so you'll solve for cosine of theta, is the dot product over the product of the magnitudes, which is another common way of saying it. So you have magnitude, magnitude, cosine, or you have cosine of theta is dot product over product of the magnitudes. Okay, so now I'm just going to do two problems, kind of show you how this works, but those are the formulas in the boxes. You, you need to have that memorized for sure. Um, the whole process of getting it obviously takes a while. So let's see. So let's just find the dot product of u and v. Given the magnitude of u is 12, magnitude of v is 5, and theta, the angle between them, is 2 pi over 3. So since I know how to find the dot product, it should just be the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of the angle between them. So this is actually a pretty simple problem once you know what all these things are. So u dot v is going to be um, 60. And then the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. So the dot product, u dot v, is negative 30. All right, so that's one example. And maybe we'll do this one. Let's find the angle between u, which is the vector 3, negative 4, and v, which is the vector negative 12, negative 5. So this, I'm looking for the angle between them, so I'm going to start with cosine of theta. And then we said that's the dot product over the product of the magnitude. So the dot product is first times first, which is 3 times negative 12, plus second times second, which is negative 4 times negative 5. So let's write that out. So it's 3 times negative 12 plus negative 4 times negative 5, and then that's all over product of the magnitudes. These are really nice vectors because they're kind of like Pythagorean triples. So the magnitude of a 3, negative 4 vector is going to be 5, and the magnitude of a negative 12, negative 5 vector, that's 5, 12, 13, so it's going to be 13. And then we just simplify. So cosine of theta is going to be uh, negative 16 over 65, which means that theta is the inverse cosine of negative 16 over 65. And usually kind of the question you want to answer here is, is the angle acute or obtuse? The inverse cosine of a negative always gives you a quadrant 2 angle from the unit circle, so this is definitely an obtuse angle. So that's the answer to the question, but we could, from that, get that the angle must be obtuse. All right, so that's how we derive the relationship between uh, the dot product and the angle between the vectors. Um, and that's two examples of how you're going to use it frequently. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.